When I was 25, there was a short time I was staying at my aunt's. It was her, my two cousins, and I. She lives in a nice apartment complex, and her unit is on the lower level. Her living room has a lot of windows that she keeps open for fresh air and for her cats to people watch. Her unit happens to be on the corner near a grassy courtyard path. When I had first moved in, I noticed a man who gave me an off vibe. My cousins and aunt said he lived upstairs in two units over, recovering from hard drugs that permanently messed him up. His parents paid for him to stay there as they didn't want him with them. They also said, other than hearing him mumble and say weird things, no one had ever had an issue. My aunt works nights and leaves at 3 a.m. My younger cousin works nights and leaves at 2 a.m. That usually left my same-aged cousin and I the only two there until we leave for work around 8. For context, it is a very open living room to dining room plan. My aunt always had people staying over, so she has a second couch in the dining room in place of a table. This is where I slept. She stayed on the one in the living room. My aunt has also never been one to lock her doors, until this incident. One night, I'm on my phone, trying to sleep at about 1am and hear a man yelling. He's yelling, don't shoot, and banging on the door to the right of ours. Two male college students live there and just told him he had the wrong apartment and to leave. He says sorry and walks off. I am looking through the kitchen window, which is in direct line of sight from my couch bed, and it's the weird neighbor who sees me and grins. He then walks back to his home. I was unsettled, but not enough to wake anyone else up over it. Told my family nonchalantly the next day in a LOL that was weird way. My cousin and I watch a movie and head off to bed. I have a very hard time staying asleep, but I woke up this time to the feeling of someone watching me. I check my phone and it's around 3.30 a.m., so I know that it's not my aunt or cousin. I sit up and figure I'll go watch TV on my aunt's couch since she was gone already. The feeling gets stronger as I am in the living room. Then, I see the shadow of a person standing still in the grass courtyard looking in. I froze. I immediately go back to my couch to get my phone. As I do, the person is gone. I am now trying to calm myself down and think of waking my cousin up when I hear the creepy man's voice. He is now at the kitchen window, which looks out directly in front of her front door. I drop to the floor, out of his line of sight, and start frantically trying to call my cousin. The man is now saying things at the window front door like, I'm not going to hurt you, and I'm unarmed, over and over again. His face is up against the window. Then he starts talking about wanting to pet the cats he saw through the window. I can't get a hold of my cousin. It's been 20 minutes of this at this point. In this completely clown shit situation, I don't have many options. I could jump up and run for a knife, but I'd need to go to the kitchen. I could try to respond and ask him to leave, but I've learned when you underestimate crazy, you lose every time. I now hear him knocking and knocking while repeating his nonsense. I'm doing that ridiculous looking army crawl snake slither across the floor down the hall now. I see the door handle start to turn. I'm about to jump up when my cousin bursts out of his room directly across from the front door. Now he's not the biggest guy, but boy he was intimidatingly mad at the circus show taking place at his front door. He starts yelling at the guy that he needs to get the fuck off his porch and that he's calling the cops. The man tries to say, I'm unarmed. I'm not going to hurt you. Don't be afraid. My cousin goes off and yells, that's fucking dandy. It's 4 a.m. You need to leave or I'll call the cops. What the fuck is wrong with you? So the guy backs up with his hands in the air and leaves. Needless to say, we didn't go back to sleep. My aunt was called, who called the apartment manager. The next day when I came home from work, his parents were there, packing moving boxes in a truck from his place. Maybe he was trying to get me to open the door by seeming friendly. Maybe he had a bad trip and really wanted to pet a cat to feel better. We will never know. This happened to me a long time ago when I was a kid. I was home alone one hot summer evening. My parents were out on business and I was enjoying the time alone to do whatever I wanted. Now, we lived in a two-bedroom first-floor apartment at the time. From the front entrance was a hall that opened into the kitchen. 
To the left at the far end of the kitchen was my room, and to the right of the kitchen was the living room which connected to a small den. My parents' bedroom was also connected to the living room off to the right. It was around 9pm when I just finished dinner and began my nightly routine of taking out the trash, brushing my teeth, and shutting down for the night. Before retreating to my room, I remember opening all the windows in the kitchen and living room so that the house would cool down over the night. The windows were all barred so I wasn't really too worried about any funny business happening. Now, I'm a little bit of a security freak, so all the doors in the house have locks including my bedroom and the bathroom. I shut off all the lights and went to my room to watch TV. Right at around midnight, I dozed off. I had a really weird dream, or rather nightmare, of someone knocking on my door with the knocking getting progressively louder. It was really odd because in the dream I was laying in my bed but I couldn't move. The knocking got so blaringly loud until I couldn't stand it, then I heard a scream and woke up. My heart was racing and I was sweating a little, but no damage done. I looked around my room and glanced at my alarm which read 4am. Seeing nothing really out of the ordinary, I brushed the dream off and just laid back down. I closed my eyes and suddenly heard knocking on my actual bedroom door this time. A little delirious, I thought I had slipped back into my nightmare. My eyes shot wide open and I just sat up and stared at my door trying to listen. There were three slow knocks that followed. My very first thought was my parents were back early with food or something and they wanted me to have some. My dad was pretty notorious for knocking on my door when he got home late at night to check on me, sometimes without even calling my name first. I always told him that it really spooked me out and he should announce himself when he knocks, but he always forgets. I got up and began walking towards the door, but something felt wrong. When my parents come home, there's usually commotion. They might be having a conversation, or I can hear their keys jingling, my mom's heels, footsteps, something. This time, however, it was dead silent. I stopped halfway to the door and then called out. Who is it? Who's there? No answer. I opened my mouth to call out again, but before I could get the first word out, there were several rapid knocks on the door. Very persistent knocks as if it was an emergency, and whoever was on the other side needed to get in now. I felt a lump in my throat. My mind was racing and the first thing I thought of was that what if it was my dad on the other side and he's in some kind of trouble? What if he's choking and can't speak? What if he needs my help? I was frozen in place and couldn't move. I then said, Who is it? Who's there? Once more. Again. Nothing. Please say something. Please tell me who it is. It's not funny, I said. A few moments of silence went by. Suddenly, it was as if someone just threw their whole weight into the door. Rapid loud bangs began attacking the door. Kicks, punches. It was as if there were three people on the other side trying to bang the door down. It was so loud that I started crying. I found myself jumping backwards and crawling to the corner of my room. The violent banging went on for a few more moments, and then silence. I sat in the corner, frozen. My hands were covering my mouth and tears were rolling down my cheeks. I thought this was the end. I was absolutely shocked the door stood still because when I heard the first bang, I thought the frame would come crashing down and whatever was on the other side would instantly enter and end my life. I sat there for a period of time that felt like an eternity. Suddenly I heard clinking, the sound of metal brushing into each other. I knew that whatever was on the other side was going through the silverware drawer. If my life didn't end already, this was my last chance because I knew I wouldn't get another one. I sprang up and climbed onto my dresser sitting against my window. I threw open the curtain and shoved the window down and then climbed out as quietly as I could. I fell to the sidewalk and ran to the police station down the road. I was absolutely hysterical and told them what had occurred. Later that night, my parents were called, as they did an investigation of my house. The only things out of place were a cigarette butt left at the base of my bedroom door, and there was also a butter knife on the kitchen table. In the following months, we moved out of that apartment, and thankfully I can say that was the most excitement I'd ever been through. 
I soon went to college, graduated, moved to a new state with family nearby, and life is continuing as normal. I'll never know if it was a prank that night or if someone was actually out to get me, but whatever, whoever you are, let's definitely never meet. This happened a long time ago. At the time, I was living alone in a first floor apartment. My girlfriend had been sick at the time and ended up in the hospital dealing with a rare disease. She recovered fine from it, but during those weeks, my life was pretty much go to work, go to the hospital to be with her, come back to the house for dinner, and then bed. It was a Friday night and I was alone, so I decided to distract myself by reading and watching some videos on YouTube. Hours passed, and at 3 a.m. I was in bed with my iPad in hand, almost falling asleep. Then I heard it. I knew that sound pretty well. You see, outside right in front of my bedroom door, there was a long corridor that leads directly to the kitchen. This apartment was in a building built in the 50s, and the kitchen door was old and had become slightly bent. That meant that whenever you turned the doorknob to open the door, it would snap out of its place with a distinct clack sound. That was the sound I had just heard. A lot of thoughts ran through my mind in that moment. Had I dreamt it in my semi-sleeping state? Or maybe the sound was real, but what happened was that the doorknob internal mechanism broke and it opened by itself. Or, of course, maybe someone was in my house and they had just opened the door. At this point, my heart was racing and I started considering my options. I had a broomstick next to my bed. You may ask why I had it there, and to be honest, I had it exactly because I lived alone and thought one day I might be in a situation like this where I would need a weapon. My girlfriend even used to joke about it, but I guessed that my paranoia was now paying off in the most unfortunate of situations. So, I decided I was going to take the stick on one hand and grab my cell phone in the other. I would open my bedroom door while calling 911, and if no one else was in the apartment, I would just apologize to the operator on the other end of the line and explain the situation. However, back in those days, my cell phone wasn't yet a smartphone, and it had this feature I found interesting, even though I never used it. If you pressed on a couple of specific keys, it would start ringing like someone was calling you. It was meant to be used when you wanted to simulate you were getting a call to get out of a boring conversation or a tough situation. Clumsily, I pressed on those keys and the phone started ringing. I quickly shut it up, but now it had become clear inside the apartment that I was awake. If someone was outside my bedroom, they'd certainly heard it. What was going to happen? I stopped for a few seconds to hear my surroundings. Nothing. It was dead quiet. I decided to continue with my plan. I dialed 911 with one hand, raised the boomstick with the other, and quickly opened the door. As soon as I did that, someone sprinted in front of me in the corridor and quickly got into the kitchen, closing the door behind them. I screamed, hey, and started pursuing, but a split second later I thought, stop, what if there is someone else in the apartment? What if another intruder sneaks up on you from behind? In front of me was the corridor to the kitchen but on my left was another corridor that led to the living room and office. The office had the light on, so the intruder had been there, but I didn't know if he had company. I took a step back into the entrance of my room so that I wouldn't be caught off guard. Sir, are you there? The 911 operator was calling me on the phone. I quickly explained to him what was happening, gave him my address, and he told me the police was on its way. They had a patrol car nearby, so I should just wait. Then he hung up. The apartment was dead silent. I was terrified. There were only three things I had been able to notice in the intruder. He had a light-colored sweatshirt with horizontal black lines, dark hair, and he smelled really bad. In fact, the smell was still in the apartment and I could still sense it. The police arrived after seven or eight minutes, which felt like ages. The apartment door was next to the bedroom, so I managed to quickly approach it and unlock the door to let them in. I explained what had happened to the police, and they said that we should go through the whole apartment and check every single hiding space. They had seen situations before where a burglar had hidden himself for a long period, even after the house owners had called the police to later attack them. 
The apartment wasn't that big, so it was easy to conclude that no one else was hiding there. In the kitchen, it was obvious what had happened. It had these large windows that faced the back of the building where we had a small community garden. I had left one of the windows open and next to it, on the outside, there was a large drain pipe along the wall. The intruder used that pipe to climb to my window and get in. The police left to go look around the neighborhood for someone matching the description of the sweatshirt I described. While they were gone, I could still smell that horrible odor the intruder had left in the apartment. After around 20 minutes, they came back. They couldn't find anyone. The burglar was long gone. Luckily, he didn't have the chance to steal anything while he was in my apartment, but the audacity. I mean, he must have seen the light on in my bedroom through the edges of the door and still he tried walking past it to steal something from the office. I didn't sleep that night. In the morning, I went to the garden in the back to try to find any further clues about the intruder, but couldn't find anything. A neighbor in the building next door was at the window when I called out to her. I told her what had happened. She just smiled and said, Well, welcome to the neighborhood. We all have stories like that in this place. You should never leave your windows open and maybe you should consider getting some bars to protect them. The next day, I bought a motion alarm and installed it in the kitchen. I never had another experience like that in the apartment, but to be honest, I never slept the same way in that bedroom, traumatized by those events. At night, I would fear hearing again the sound of the kitchen door snapping out of place. A few years later, I moved out to a larger apartment in another neighborhood. This time it was on the seventh floor, so much harder for intruders to get in through the windows. So, to the intruder that came into my apartment and smelled really bad, let's not meet ever again. This happened a few years ago, but still freaks me out when I think about how differently it could have turned out. My hubs, baby, and I used to live in the not-greatest apartment complex. There were three sections of the complex with a total of six apartments. Three on top, three on bottom, in two different buildings within each section. I lived in the upper level, middle apartment, on the second building in the second section. I got along with my neighbors fine. We actually all moved into our apartments within a few weeks of each other. To my left is a woman we will call Barb, in her fifties, and lives alone. Barb is a drinker and a big participant of any substances that make her feel good. Has a rotation of man friends that come and go. All fine by me. She gives me no issues, so I really don't give a fuck about what she does. But it needs to be mentioned for story purposes. I already mentioned that these weren't the best apartments. They were income-based, old and cheap. I'm pretty sure the walls were insulated with newspaper if they had any insulation at all. So you could hear basically everything from both surrounding apartments and a lot from the units below. Only time it really became an issue is during nap time and night time when something would either prevent my one-year-old from sleeping or wake him up. It didn't happen often, and when it did, I was able to go knock on the noise culprit's door and handle it with no issues. Since my child was still a baby and I was constantly exhausted, 90% of the time his bedtime was my bedtime. Our bedrooms were on the opposite end of the apartment, from living room, kitchen, balcony, Barb's apartment. We also slept with both a noise machine and a fan that drowned out any noise disturbances during the night. This particular night though, my husband was off work and we decided to watch a movie. There was a party going on in the first building of our section. Barb was friends with the party throwers, and we could hear her in and out of her apartment door several times, as well as all the party people who were outside smoking. At some point during the movie, I fell asleep using my husband's lap as a pillow. Around 2 a.m., loud laughing from Bard's apartment wakes me up. I get up to pee and brush my teeth before coming back to kiss my husband goodnight and get in bed do my business and making my way back up the hall to the living room from bathroom to tell my husband good night. I hear knocking on Barb's door, followed with what sounds like her door exploding off its hinges and flying into the wall that separates her apartment and ours. My husband and I both say what the fuck at the same time and kind of just freeze. We hear Barb and a man talking and it sounded like normal talking. They weren't yelling or anything, so... We chalk it up to Barb and her guest having a little too much fun at the party and 
shrug it off. I get in bed and quickly fall back asleep. No more than 10 minutes after getting into bed, I wake up to what sounds like heavy furniture being body slammed coming from Barb's apartment, irked as fuck from the second slumber disturbance, and knowing this is going to wake my kid up, I make my way to the living room, planning to put my slippers on and knock on Barb's door, and kindly ask her to shut the fuck up. I first walk out onto my balcony to smoke a cigarette, while hoping she realizes how loud whatever the fuck she's got going on is, and fix it without being asked. The body slamming furniture only gets even louder while on the balcony so I assume they've worked their way through her apartment and are now body slamming her bedroom furniture now. Even more irritated now, I decide Barb's too blitzed to realize how loud she's being, and I'm going to have to remind her that none of us are deaf in my apartment, so she was going to have to move her furniture fight somewhere else, or reschedule for normal furniture fighting hours, which are obviously during the day. I stand up and take a few steps towards Barb's bedroom window, where our small bucket for cigarette butts sits on the ledge of my balcony. Her bedroom window and the closest edge of my balcony to her window are only inches apart. She could easily crawl out of her window and onto my balcony, and vice versa. And that's when I hear it. Muffled screams like someone is holding a hand over a mouth, and a man's voice say in a very low voice, If you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to kill you, you fuckers. So you're going to fuck me and like it. Oh, fuck is my first thought. I fly inside the sliding door from my balcony and grab my phone to call 911 while telling my husband Barb is in trouble. He goes out and bangs on her door. Nobody comes, and it's locked because he tried the door handle after not being answered. I'm standing between the living room and kitchen on the phone with 911 and husband walks outside and leans over to see if he can see anything through Barb's windows. The blinds are closed, but a couple of blind slats are broken, leaving a small crack big enough for my husband to see someone lying on the floor halfway in her bedroom and halfway into her bathroom, and another person standing over them. He tells me, and I relay it to the 911 operator, while also adding, if the police aren't here soon, we're going to bust the door down ourselves. She calmly asked me not to do anything like that, to stay on the line, and that the police were en route and would arrive soon. About two minutes later, we hear several pairs of boots coming up the apartment stairs to get to the second level of our apartment, and then loud pounding, knocking with, Police department, open up! I crack my front door to peek out and tell them we can still see two people in the back bedroom of Barb's apartment. There are four uniformed police officers with their guns drawn, and the one standing in my front door tells me to go back inside and lock the door. Yes, sir. I go back inside and straight right inside my balcony door to watch for anything, like Barb trying to escape the man or the man trying to escape the cops. Here, another round of police pounding at Barb's door going unanswered, and then the sound of the door being kicked in. Fire and rescues have shown up by this point, and the whole complex is lit up with lights coming from emergency vehicles. We hear a small scuffle, and then the screen door of her apartment creaks open. I look out of the peephole and see a man in handcuffs being led down the stairs, and then EMT coming up the stairs with a stretcher. A few minutes later, we hear the screen door creak open again, and I see EMT carrying a stretcher with someone in it, and open my door. Barb is unconscious and in bad shape. Her face and head are bloody and swelling and exposed skin of her arms are already bruising. As I'm staring at her in the stretcher, going down the stairs in disbelief, the same police officer that told me to get back inside and lock my door walks out of Barb's apartment and asks if he can speak to my husband and me. I say yes and invite him inside, where he thanks us for calling 911 and tells us he has little doubt that we saved Barb's life asks us what we heard and I reiterate the whole story from beginning to end as he takes notes. He thanks us again and leaves. Barb calls me about a week later from the hospital to thank me. I ask her how she is and she tells me that she has a fractured skull and, and bleeding on her brain, broken cheekbone and jaw, broken ribs and lots of bruising all over her body, but feels lucky to be alive and thanks me again. She also tells me the man is someone she has known for several years, that he had showed up at the party right before she went home to her own apartment and was mad she didn't want to sleep with him, and even madder that she had been super flirty with the POC at the party. Several months later, the ADA prosecuting the man calls me 
and asks me to tell her everything from that night. So I tell her, from start to finish too. She asks me if I would be willing to testify in court and I tell her whatever she needs to lock that animal up. A couple of weeks after that, I come home and have a summons on my door to be a witness in the case. But the court date listed is already passed. I call the ADA back and explain both worried about how me not testifying hurt the case and putting him away, and also if I had a warrant out for my arrest for not showing. She tells me that the date was wrong, but that I'm also not needed. Catch up with Barb a few weeks after that, and she tells me that my recorded call to 911 was used during court and that the guy got 15 years in prison. So, I'm a 22F, and I just moved into this apartment complex in the heart of downtown Baltimore. Tonight was my second night living here, and I went to do the laundry that was on the lower level of the complex, kind of like the basement, and decided to use the gym that was also on the lower level, while I wait for my clothes to get washed. So, I'm in the gym, working out, and it's a small room with not much equipment. I was the only one in there, and I see this guy in the hallway outside, looking at me. I ignored him and continued working out until he came into the gym and gave me a thumbs up and said, good job. I smiled and said, thank you. He then comes into the gym and starts the treadmill and I didn't want to be confined in a small space with this guy. So I went to the laundry room and my washer was almost finished. So I waited and texted on my phone. And a few minutes later, that same guy came in and he went to do his load. We were the only ones in there. And then he came up to me and showed me his phone and it was on Google Translate and it read, you are beautiful. I said, thank you. And he continued to translate for me to read. He's from Saudi Arabia and he barely spoke any English. And he was asking if he wanted to be my friend. I have a hard time saying no, so I just shrugged and said, okay. And he asked via Google Translate for my number. I gave him a fake and he called it right in front of me, and of course my phone didn't ring. He continued to call, and still nothing. He told me to wait there, and ran back to the elevators. I started to get a bad feeling, so I left the laundry room. I waited on the other side of the hallway, passed the elevators, and turned the corner where he wouldn't see me, and texted my boyfriend what was happening. The elevator door then opened, and the man comes out, and I heard him go into the laundry. I had this gut feeling telling me to run, and I'm never a frantic person or anything, and I don't get spooked that easily, but I just had a really bad feeling. I pressed the exit button to unlock the door that leads to the outside, and it wasn't budging. I turned around and saw him head into the gym from the mirror on the wall, and knew he was going to check this side next, so I kept frantically pushing the button, and the doors unlocked, and I ran outside. I walked around for 10 minutes on the phone with my boyfriend, telling him what had happened, and went to the lobby of my complex and asked the front desk lady if she could escort me to the laundry room. She said yes, and we went. The man wasn't there, and I put my clothes in the dryer, and she told me to come back and get her when the dryer was done. 45 minutes later, the front desk lady and I went to the laundry room, and guess who was in there? The man. He smiled, and was about to say something until he saw who I was with and became quiet. I got my clothes, and we left and the guy left with us too. We all got in the elevator, with the lady in between us, and her and I got off on the lobby floor, so she could show me where the other laundry rooms were on the other side of the complex. I thanked her, and went on my way. I waited for the elevator to come down, and when it did, and the doors opened, that man came off, and held the door open for me. I said no, and told him I would wait for the next one. I didn't want him knowing which floor I lived on. He got off and was pacing back and forth and huffing and puffing. As soon as the next elevator opened, I got on and he tried to get on with me. I immediately got off and he was like, come in, come inside. And I said no. And he started to get really mad and started to walk towards me. I booked it back to the lobby and to my luck, the front desk lady was already heading my way, telling me she saw what happened on the security camera. She escorted me to my room and made sure I got in safely. I'm so thankful that she was there, and this probably wouldn't have happened if I just cut the conversation short with that man. I have never been this freaked out before and have never felt this unsafe either. 
Even though he didn't necessarily do anything wrong, it, it was just the vibe I got off from him. I'm going to use the laundry room on the other side of the complex, just so I can lessen the chance having to ever run into that man again. This was 2004, when I was 20, and living in a small, two-level apartment on the main floor of a building. Out front, there were three stairs, then a deck, then three more stairs to the front door, and another little narrow deck that ran the length of the front of my apartment, which besides the door was all windows. The main floor was tiny kitchen-slash-living room, and a door to the hallway for laundry-slash-parking access, all of which is totally visible from the windows. It was fall in Western Canada during daylight savings, pitch black early and surprisingly warm for the season. I had all my windows open, and hadn't closed the blinds as to get a breeze in, and was talking on the phone to my sister. I had my back to the windows, and when I turned around, I thought I saw something weird at the window. It was really bright inside, so I turned the main light off and see a man pressed against the window, staring at me. I screamed and told my sister, a man is on my deck looking at me. He seemed to take off into the darkness. I turned off all the lights inside, put the outside ones on, and I was babbling to my sister like, holy shit, a peeping Tom, so scary, I can't believe it. And then he just walks back up the deck. I screamed again, he's back, I have to call 911, hung up and did, while his face was pressed against the window, and it was still open. Windows were floor to ceiling with screened crank opened bottom sections that I had open to the max and could for sure accommodate a determined person crawling in. He could hear me and the 911 call, but didn't move. I had crouched down in the dark room and the main light was off, so he couldn't see me, but I had the lights on beside the door to the hallway and on the stairs to the bedroom. I didn't want to move and let him know where I was. I should have run into the hall and banged on a neighbor's door, but I was in shock and after all, the cops are coming from a station ten blocks away. They'll get here soon, right? We can't find your address. I'm directly behind the rec center at X and Y, corner unit, unmistakable area landmark, and the only apartment building there. The man at the window starts banging on the glass. I was whispering, but assume he heard me give panicked directions repeatedly, and we both can't hear sirens. It felt like this would go on forever, when he finally just ran off, couldn't see far, and there were plenty of places to crouch and hide, so I was not at all sure. I peek out to see a police car, so I told the operator, they're here, and then the car starts to drive away, and the operator told me to go outside and flag them down. I don't know why I actually did, because I was scared shitless, but when I did, they rolled down their windows. Ma'am, do you need help? Oh, you're looking for me, I think. I called 911. We are just driving by. But what's the problem? They never found the man that terrified me, and made me feel so unsafe that I moved. But it was truly the cops not being able to find the only apartments behind a notable building that completely shook me. The frightening end note is when I moved out, they tried to charge me because the downstairs screens are shredded from your cats. The screens were pristine the day the creeper showed up, and that was the last time I opened the downstairs windows or blinds or used the front door. The property manager laughed and mocked me, called BS when I said someone cut them, until I showed her the police report. She lived there too, so suddenly... Not so funny.